With us in the studio today is Amanda Cisneros. Amanda is a high school Spanish teacher in West Michigan and is joined by her husband, Guillermo, who is the new executive director of the West Michigan Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. They're here today to talk about working, living, and parenting in a bilingual, bicultural world. Amanda, Guillermo, welcome to Feel Like You Belong. Thank you. Thank you very much for having us, Helen. You bet. Now, when we were talking earlier, you had mentioned that the two of you did not meet and fall in love in either the U.S. or in Mexico, a third country altogether. Tell us about that. Yeah, so um, we were living in Spain at that time. Uh, we both were working in Madrid. Um, and uh, I had a roommate that had a good friend, uh, Maureen. And uh, we always were you know, talking about with Maureen and, and Phil or playing tennis with, this, with her uh, friend, uh, but uh, we never did. Uh, so one day, Maureen came to, uh, to my church, and uh, after worshiping, we divided in small groups, and I was leading one of the, one of the, the small groups, but I saw Maureen and, uh, and her friend leaving, and I said, hey, Maureen, uh, come here, you know, we have a space for you. Uh, <laughs> so that friend was Amanda. And uh, uh, the funny thing was that when uh, they sat, Amanda was across me, and I had the Bible here. You know, so it was, it was crazy because I couldn't focus the whole time you know, <laughs> because of her. But yeah, and um, during that, during that uh, meeting, we, uh, we had um, a place, you know, in the third floor where we get together with uh, many other friends, you know, from church. Mm -hmm. We were about uh, like 150 uh, young people. Um, and uh, Amanda was getting surrounded by all of these uh, Spanish guys. <laughs> and I was trying to talk to her and uh, she wasn't paying attention to me. And I said, well, I'm, I'm going, you know. And uh, at, the, at the end, you know, when, uh, when we were about to leave to different places, everyone was uh, going home. She came and, um, and asked for my phone number. I asked for his number so we could play tennis. Okay. Yeah. Then. So <laughs> she was talking with the Spanish guys, but after, you know, had her eyes on this Mexican guy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. That, so, uh, Amanda, what, what were you two doing in Spain? Because that's not where people go to meet people. Well, yeah, you never know. I told my dad I wouldn't marry a Spaniard. So and you didn't? I didn't. Exactly. No. Um, we were both there originally for our master's. He went... Um, for his master's in business and economic development and was in his fifth year there then working for a media corporation. And I was in my second year there, I had done my master's in Spanish the first year and was um, working as a bilingual aide for um, teachers in a high school. Okay, okay. So how <coughs> long were you together in Spain before you came back? About six months. Six months, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, I extended my stay a little bit. Because yeah, kind of getting to like this yeah, guy. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Okay, yep, okay. spend a little more time together. And then I came back by myself, and he stayed in Spain for another year. So, mm, so like a long-distance relationship? Yes. Exactly. So we dated yep. for, for six months. And, um, you know, at the, at the end of the summer, she said, you know, I got a, a, a job in Michigan, and I'm thinking about going back. Um, <laughs> and I said, <laughs> okay. Yeah. So we we uh, we you know kept dating uh, through Skype. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, we planned our wedding through Google Docs. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. Um, Modern technology is our friend. Exactly. Yes. Across yeah. distances. Right? Exactly. I met him at Christmas time in Cancun, close to where he's from, and then went on to go with him to his family's house in Campeche, Mexico. Okay. And that's when, on that trip, is when he proposed. And the first time mm. I met his family. Um, <laughs> so how long after they met her did you propose? Uh, a couple days before they before. met me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so he didn't say, this is my girlfriend, this is my fiance. That's right, yeah. that's yeah. right. So you said yes. I did, okay. yep. And um, then <clears throat> we got together again on my spring break, he flew out. Um, from Madrid, and that's when we kind of looked at wedding venues and started 
okay. doing some of the plans. And that's when he met my family. Okay. So when your family met her, what did they say? Well, they loved her, of course. <laughs> okay. Yeah. okay. His mom's first question for me was, when are you having children? <laughs> no beating around the bush. <laughs> no. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, she's very direct. Okay. okay. No, they, they really liked her. And uh, we had our relatives coming for Christmas at okay. that time. So that was the perfect time to, uh, to introduce yeah. her to the family. Parade her out. Everybody. And, uh, yes. to impress everybody with your <laughs> lovely Spanish and, and your personality. So. Yeah. yeah. So how does one make, you have, you have two countries, you meet in a third country, how do you decide where you live? That was a process. Yeah. yeah it was a hard decision. Um, I was here, he was in Spain, and... We knew that we were interested in getting married, but I wanted to work out what country we would live in before we actually got engaged. So we just started talking about it, and um, Guillermo had never intended to go back to Mexico. Oh. Um, he was becoming a citizen in Spain already, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so Mexico was out then. Um, and I loved Spain when I was there, but I also knew that we wanted to have a family, and um, the, the big babysitters are cheaper if they're <laughs> in the family. That's right? true. Yeah. If they're in the family, and um, a little more obligation there. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. city life is great, but it's not real conducive to, you know, kids playing outside in the backyard, mm -hmm. and um, his work schedule was different. Yeah. You worked nine thirty. I, I worked uh, from nine thirty to uh, seven thirty at night. But I would never leave the office until 9.30, 10 p.m., sometimes yeah. midnight. Okay. We'd have like the two or three hour siesta during the sure. day. Sure, yeah. yeah. But that does change up a schedule. Yeah, yes. with kids, yeah. you don't get to see them a lot then after yeah, school. Sure. So. Sure. Yeah. so we decided to come to the U.S. Guillermo, I remember Guillermo saying, um, I want to improve my English. I want to get better at English. I want to see what challenges I can overcome. Mm. and what kind of job I can have in the U.S. Fantastic. So he was, he likes a good challenge. And, awesome. Yeah. So I want to talk about his challenge in a minute, but uh, <clears throat> you are a high school Spanish teacher. I am. What are those challenges for you? As a high school Spanish teacher? Yes. Um, I love being a high school Spanish teacher. I love connecting my students to people via language. Okay. Um, I often say that it's all about the people. It's all about listening, speaking, relationships. Um, and I do my best to connect them to the people. I would say one of the biggest challenges is that I'm with them 45 minutes a day. So I would sure. love to have more time with them. Some of my Are you favorite... able to connect your students to some folks outside the school who are I am. first language Spanish speakers? Yes, yep. Sometimes I bring those speakers <clears throat> into our classroom and um, sometimes we go out into the community and get <clears throat> to know people and they have a requirement to go out into the community and speak with people. Mm -hmm. um, that's part of their grade in every level of Spanish at our school. And happily, Holland has a large uh, Spanish-speaking population. <coughs> they so do, A lot yeah. of folks to access, About even 22%. Some, some businesses you can mm -hmm. take them into. Yep, and, uh, yep. we yeah. often do a unit um, where we cook something, and so then we go to the local supermercado mm -hmm. and do some shopping, practice some Spanish, learn about different products that they offer. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Gear, I want to switch and talk a little bit about your job. Now, earlier you were working um, locally in insurance, exactly. but just in this past year you got this great new job, mm -hmm. yeah. executive director of the Hispanic Chamber. Talk about how that transition has been for you and what you really like about the work. Definitely, Alan. So um, when I moved to the United States uh, eight years ago, we moved to Holland. And uh, you know that in Holland, um, a high percentage of the, po uh, of the population um, is Hispanic. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's 25% in Holland. And in Grand Rapids, 15% uh, and growing. So I was shocked when I, when I saw the percentages. Mm -hmm. And just being you know, in a community where you know, people like me were around, it was, it was, it was great. Even it was had a, a Mexican it was a great accent. Feeling. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But then I saw um, many opportunities um, in, in, the, in the business community. My background is in business. Mm -hmm. So um, I saw uh, the challenges, the struggles that these uh, businesses 
you know, have here in Michigan. For example? Um, for example, no access to capital, no processes in place, no systems. Um, so one of the biggest challenges uh, they have is getting a uh, um, 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 mortgage or, or, or money, you know, mm -hmm. from a bank, you know, to mm -hmm. start, you know, a, a business or, or, or to remodel, you know, their, their business. And uh, if you don't have uh, good bookkeeping or accounting, you, you, you can't go to, uh, to a bank and ask for money because you don't, you don't have those, you know, those uh, financial statements to show. Mm -hmm. So, um, and it, that's, that's uh, really hard, you know, for, for, the, for the Latino community, for Latino business community. Um, so I saw, I saw the opportunities and uh, I became a member of the chamber in 2012. Um, just, just a normal member, started going to the meetings, then I, I was in love, you know, with the mission of the chamber. I became, a, became an ambassador, mm -hmm. um, and after two years and a half, they invited me to be part of the board of directors. I was already very engaged, you know, in the, sure. you know, in the activities, you know, of the chamber, mm -hmm. and um, I am very passionate, you know, about uh, what we do. So when, uh, when the previous executive director left, I saw the opportunity in, in becoming a director and kind of um, guide, you know, the, the, the businesses and, and help them get to the next level. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So talk about your, <clears throat> some of your initiatives or, or visions that, because you're, you're changing programs, you're adding yes. programs. Just talk a little bit about some of those. Exactly, Alan. So um, we currently have uh, uh, more than 40 events at the chamber, uh, you know, per year. That's a lot. It's a lot. We have a lot of events. Um, but really, my focus, you know, in the next, in the next few years is going to be developing programs for the Latino community, mm -hmm. for Latino business community. Um, the, the first um, thing I see is uh, revitalizing the Hispanic businesses in the greater Grand Rapids area. When you talk about revitalizing, what's that mean? So it means bringing uh, builders, contractors, uh, consultants, uh, the city of Grand Rapids, the city of Holland, uh, different nonprofits together and bring all of the resources that Grand Rapids has to this Latino uh, business community. That's um, the thing is that I see many resources in, in the Grand Rapids area um, and I met uh, money, you know, mentorships, uh, workshops, but nothing getting to the Latino business community. And really access to those Exactly. If, if, it, if they don't have access, then they don't exist. They're, exactly. So I, I, I uh, you know, I asked myself, why, why is this happening? Why nothing is getting to this, to this community? So, um, so the, uh, the project is, is to start, you know, with the financial piece to pretty much uh, put things in place for mm -hmm. them so they can have access to that capital that they need to remodel and they need to bring technology, um, customer service, um, inventory management processes mm -hmm. because currently there's nothing you yeah. know in, in, in these businesses and they struggle and they keep you know the same business for years uh, they are very hard workers the product it's amazing the food that they cook you know if, if we talk about restaurants it's incredible but you know if you don't have a process in your business you don't have a system you will never be able to get to the next level sure so that's that's a real challenge that I see for our Latino business community, and I want to change that. Mm -hmm. you know, I, and I want to bring all of the resources possible, collaborate with all of the organizations in Grand Rapids and the Holland area, West Michigan, and just uh, help them come to the next level. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, we're going to have to wrap up in just a minute, but the theme of the show is belonging. Uh, Amanda, first, uh, how do you understand that idea? I feel like I belong when I can contribute to the community and when I feel <clears throat> needed and valued, have friends. Okay. Great, thanks. Guillermo. Yeah, um, I feel that I belong when I'm, I feel welcomed, you know, wherever I go. And uh, when, I, when I have people that, uh, that uh, they recognize the, uh, the work that, that we do and uh, they acknowledge the, the Latino mm -hmm. community and how we are part of the society and part of the economy. That's, that's when I feel that I belong you know, to this you know, um, area in Michigan. Awesome. Mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah. Thank you both so much for coming by and sharing your stories with us. It's been Thank a real you for delight us. having you. Yeah. Thank you very much, Thank Alan. You. You're welcome. Appreciate mm -hmm. it. Thank you for joining us. 
if you're watching on TV, stay tuned with some tips on American English, culture, and humor. For our friends on the internet, we hope you'll join our ongoing conversation with the impressive immigrants who partner with native-born folks to contribute their vast skills to making the United States a better place.